welcome back students so we have looked at various strengthening mechanisms that work in metals alloys so in this lecture we will summarize all that but before that uh, there were there is one particular aspect about uh, the yield point phenomena that we missed earlier so we will complete that part which is called strain aging so let's begin and thereafter we will look at the overall summary so strain aging if you remember the yield point phenomena it would it uh, it looks something like this so you have upper yield point then there is something like a fluctuation and then over here so what was described is that at this this is the upper yield point this is the lower yield point and there is luder band forming and at this point the luder band has formed throughout the sample and hence the material begins to deform uniformly after this so now let's say if you are at this particular point and drop the stress so you will come back like this now if you start to, if you want to deform it again then this would look like this this would look like a com usual material where you don't have any yield point phenomena however if you heat the material what will, what what happens at the atomic level so first of all let's understand what happens in this particular case once you have drop the stress and then try to move the dislocations again now there is enough number of mobile dislocations and therefore the deformation can take place smoothly just like in material where you have sufficient number of mobile dislocations but now if you heat the material what will happen is that the dislocations which were able to disconnect themselves from the interstitial solute atoms will now the solute atoms will diffuse and because they have a lower energy and or basically there is a bonding between the two there is a tendency to bond between the dislocate formed uh, bond between the dislocation and the interstitial atoms so the interstitial atoms will diffuse and will bond with the dislocation or basically it will sit uh, right below the uh, dislocations and thereby pin the dislocations again and therefore the density of mobile dislocations would reduce and overall it would mean that you will again see the yield point phenomena and therefore if this is without heating now if you were to heat it so you would see something like this meaning the yield point phenomena reappears and we know why it reappears it reappears because the solute atoms diffuse and they have the tendency to form bond with the dislocation or basically sit near the dislocation line and which will in the end result in immobility of the dislocation and thereby decreasing the overall density of mobile dislocations and therefore again you would see this kind of phenomena where first it will have to unpin some of the dislocation there will be a small band and then uh, at a lower stress this band keeps getting stretched to a wider and wider region until the all of the region has uh, uniformly distributed mobile dislocation density and thereafter it will dif uniformly deform so this phenomena is called strain aging and uh, this behavior is actually exploited in one particular type of material which is bake hardened steel now bake hardened steel is basically a low manganese uh, 
steel. And over here, so basically what happens here is that bake hardenable steel has very low con concentration of interstitials. And therefore, initially it would behave as if there were no yield point phenomena. However, if you bake it a little bit, meaning heat it a little bit, then the yield point phenomena reappear. Uh, not, I shouldn't say reappear, it appears because now those whatever small amount of solute atoms were present, they move diffuse and pin the dislocations. And therefore, the material will now become harder. So where it is used, for example, if you want to form a shape of the, from the material at a lower temperature and uh, at a lower stress, then you can easily deform the material, give it whatever shape, and then just heat it a little bit. And in fact, in some cases, for example, when you are trying to make uh, automobile bodies, then sometimes during the painting process, there is automatically some amount of heating, 150 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius. And in that process, the diff automatically that diffusion process will take place or uh, bake hard baking will take place, what is called as bake hardening. And in the process, solid interstitial atoms will move and pin the dislocations and the yield point phenomena will appear. So overall, this would look something like this. So initially the material has very low strength because it has very low fraction of uh, interstitials. So you can easily or with a small amount of pre-straining, it will form, uh, it will give you a stress strain curve like this. So you can say this is at the pre-straining. And after some time, once you have formed the shape, you can bake it, or maybe the process itself involves some amount of heating, like the painting process. And in that process, the baking will take place and then so interstitials will move and pin the dislocations. So the overall new stress strain curve would look something like this. So here, this is with only pre-straining and this one is pre-straining plus baking. And in the process, what you get is this much increment in the sigma. So this is bake hardened steel, which is exploited in the industry so that you can do the farming process at lower stresses, then heat it a little bit. And sometimes heating would itself be involved in the overall process. And thereafter, the material will, the form process, form component will become harder and less amenable to any deformation. So this is uh, strain aging and an application of strain aging. Now let's move on to some uh, summarizing overall various processes that we have learned. So here I have given you a table, which will, which gives you the most important governing equation, which shows how the strength increases. This first one is work hardening or strain hardening, which is given by Taylor relation. And this column tells you that which dislocation interacts uh, with which particular entity will resulting, which results in the strengthening of the material. Because as you remember, strengthening happens because in the end, dislocation is interacting with some entity. So in the case of work hardening or strain hardening, dislocation is interacting with other dislocations and it is overall a strong strengthening process. And the relation is given by the Taylor relation, which is alpha GB root row. Then there is also the grain size effect or the hull pitch relation where the dislocations interact with the grain boundaries. And again, this is a very strong effect and the relation is given by this, the increment in the strength is given by KY by root D, where D is the grain size and KY is a proportionality constant. Then you have the solid solution where the dislocations interact with the solid solution, uh, solute atoms. And the overall effect is kind of weak 
not very strong. And this is the equal governing equation. So G is the modulus, uh, E is the strain, and C is some factor. And then you have the precipitates where you can have small precipitates or large precipitates. So small precipitates are coherent where cutting takes place for the large precipitates. It is the loop that forms around it. And also this is uh, the governing equation for uh, dispersoids. And for the small coherent particles, the strengthening effect is weak, but for the large incoherent particles, the strengthening effect is strong. And this is, these are the governing equations that are given over here. So now let's uh, quickly summarize what we know. So first one is the strain hardening. So strain hardening, one of the primary effect is the dislocation interaction. which is given by the peach color relation, which we saw was obtained from here. So sigma xx, sigma xy, dot b, so it is sigma dot b. cross E, where E is the line vector. So here sigma is a stress being generated, which may be external stress or stresses from other dislocation, some stresses acting and Berger's vector and uh, line vector are the dislocation onto which this force is acting. So this gives you the effect of these stresses on these, on this particular dislocation. And we looked at special cases where we had two edge dislocations, two screw dislocations. We were able to find, we have also looked at image dislocation that tells us that why whiskers are so strong. And then we also looked at Taylor hardening, which is based on the relation between two edge dislocations. So we saw that the critical stress to overcome an array of dislocation, not array of dislocation, when there are two dislocations, if you want to move another dislocation, then it is obtained at X equal to 0 0.414 of Y. And from here, we obtained that tau C should be equal to GB1. 8 pi 1 minus nu y or this y becomes h where h is the distance between the two dislocations and from here we move down to an array of dislocations where we showed that rho which is the dislocation density can be related to the distance high distance h by the relation 1 over 2h square, which implies that h can be written as 1 over root 2 times rho. And from here, we obtain the relation tau equal to alpha gb root rho. Now, this clearly established that as the dislocation density increases, the strength of the material increases. Then we looked at why the dislocation density increases with increasing strain. Then we saw that there are multi dislocation multiplication taking place and those multiplication are taking place because when, uh, if there are dislocations which are pinned then the dislocation and you keep applying the stresses, the dislocation form loop and this re leads to frank read source. And in the context of uh, dislocations getting pinned, we also looked at dislocation, dislocation intersection. And here we found that there is uh, energy cost whenever there is a step formed. And also that 
some of these steps are glycyl in nature. So overall the dislocations uh, get pinned and then and there is also a step formed when they intersect. So the overall you need higher stresses to overcome this and which leads to work hardening or strain hardening. And then we also looked at four different types of intersection between edge, edge dislocation, edge, uh, dis when the verges vector are parallel, when the verges vector are perpendicular to each other, then we looked at intersection of edge and screw dislocation. And we also looked at screw, screw dislocation intersection. The other mechanism that we have discussed is the grain monitoring strengthening. which leads to pile up. So we also showed a animation with respect to that, where we showed that if you have a grain monitor like this, and there is a glide plane like this, then there will be dislocation and you are applying stress like this. So the dislocation would get piled up and somewhere over here, you have to have a source. And at the end of it, there is a stress multiplication. So if there are n dislocations, there is n times that is stress that is acting over here. And because of this stress concentration, there are two different uh, proposed mechanisms. One, either the dislocation will burst through or the dislocations would, uh, the stress concentration would lead to generation of a dislocation source in the neighboring grain. And uh, based on the burst through mechanism proposed by uh, Hall Page, we know that uh, stresses can be given by this relation where D is the grain size and town out is the lattice, uh, the strain, oh, sorry, the shear strength required to overcome the lattice strain. And uh, from this, we follow the whole pitch relation, which is Then we also looked at solid solution strengthening, and we have also showed that there are basically two types of uh, interaction depending on whether it is edge dislocation or screw dislocation. So edge dislocation interacts with both shear and tensile stress fields because it has both the components. And therefore, it leads to both dilational and distortional strains. On the other hand, screw dislocation has only shear stress field. and it has no hydrostatic components and therefore it only results in distortional strains. Substitutional atoms have a spherical distortion field and hence they interact only with uh, edge dislocations. On the other hand, interstitial solid atoms, solute atoms have uh, both the distortional and the dilational field, and therefore they interact with both edge and screw dislocation. And therefore the hardening effect per unit con concentration is higher for interstitial atoms.
but then the problem is that the interstitial atoms do not uh, you cannot dissolve much in much larger quantities on the other hand solute atoms uh, on the other hand the substitutional atoms dissolve in a much larger quantity and hence you can dissolve much larger quantities and therefore you can get much more enhanced effect and uh, then we also looked at the yield point phenomena which happens because of the quartile field because of the presence of the interstitial atoms near the dislocations and which also leads to strain aging which is something that we discussed in this lecture also and uh, another important uh, straining mechanism was the precipitate straining which can actually be divided into two parts first is when the precipitates are small and coherent so in this case you have cutting and shearing of the precipitates and the governing equation is given by this and when the precipitate sizes are very big and they are non deformable like in dispersoid then the dislocations bow around the precipitates and again pile up kind of effect is obtained and the governing equation here is gb where l is the distance between the precipitates but if you want to be very accurate you can say you can reduce the size of the precipitates so this in most cases may be very small so you can ignore that but if it is not small then you will also have to include this part and the overall effect of the two types of precipitates is most visible in aluminum alloys where we see aging effect so up to a point where we see we see that uh, at a particular temperature and time we see that we have the highest increase in the hardness and if you keep decreasing the temperature you may even see you may even optimize the process and get even higher strength so this is increasing temperature meaning this is lower temperature so this all these governing equations are captured in the first table that we saw over here so this is the strain hardening this is for the grain size effect this is for the solute solution solute solution effect and this is when the precipitates are small and their cutting shearing is taking place and this is when the precipitates are much larger and non deforming so like also in dispersoid and like i said that this is the distance between the precipitates or the particles but if the precipitate or particle size is very large compared to l then you also need to reduce this or to subtract this and in some form of the equation you may also get a proportionality constant which is alpha so that uh, brings to us uh, that brings uh, concludes overall spending mechanisms and with that we close this lecture thank you